Since Stellaris is all about discovery, encountering something in space is not necessarily abnormal. You've got your giant skeletons that you will see every day of the week. You've got random alien species, and so on and so on. The thing is, there are events out there that are not only uncommon, but exceedingly rare. Today we're going to be talking about some of these, and some of them may be uncommon, some of them may be rare, and there is one particular instance that is so incredibly rare and unlikely to see that the developers themselves think that nobody has ever seen it legitimately. Let's dive right in to the rarest events in Stellaris. Now we're going to start off with a golden oldie. Yes, it is Sanctuary, the ring world that sometimes spawns within the galaxy, but not all the time. This is one of the oldest uh, unique systems in the game. It is heavily defended. It is, of course, a ring world, and it has four primitive species on it, which means that this place is completely operational. It is also heavily defended, and is something that you want to keep your eye on if it spawns. But how often does it actually spawn? Of all the systems in the game, Sanctuary has one of the least chances of spawning in general, and this is mostly to do with the size of the map. On a tiny galaxy, it only has a 4% of chance of spawning. On a huge galaxy, it has a 20% chance of spawning. So depending on what kind of type of galaxy you have, the chances of it spawning are significantly different. Still, sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. It is relatively uncommon, you don't see it very often, as I have already mentioned, and when you do, it's usually behind some other empire, but if you can get your hands on it, it's basically a free ring world. You're just gonna need to kill its guardians. Then we move over to Project Blue Lotus, also referred to as the Impossible Quarry. It can spawn on any of your worlds, and uh, basically what it does, at least initially, is it will add a feature to your planet where essentially you get 20% additional physics research output, which is pretty nice, but later down the line, essentially, you can have a new project, get a little bit of money, and you will get yourself a special job on your planet, which is uh, the Blue Lotus prototype, which adds a transmuter job. What does the transmuter do? Well, let's take a quick look at what a transmuter actually does in this particular case. They generate alloys out of one food. Now, there is a wide variety of things that can happen. The lab could explode and the transmuter could die in that process, which is rather unfortunate. But you could also get a Blue Lotus facility up and running. And that will cost you 22 months. And essentially, you'll be able to get even more alloys. Sadly, in the end, the Lotus will eat itself and uh, all your pops that are uh, in in that case, we're working on that, uh, are going to be removed, at least the jobs, that is. But it does give you additional mining district and uh, produce additional resources, which I guess is nice. Sadly, though, uh, it's not much you can do with that. It produces a little bit of alloys, but it's not nearly as good as the facility itself. So do be careful and uh, enjoy it whilst it lasts, if you can even get it to spawn to begin with. And then, of course, there is always everybody's favorite. Yes, Horizon Signal has recently been nerfed into the ground in terms of how often it appears. For those of you who are not aware, a couple of years ago, there was a free tiny expansion called Horizon Signal, where you can channel the powers of an eldritch god in order to turn your solar system into a bunch of tomb worlds it's one of the most powerful events in the game and it's completely insane however as of fairly recently as i mentioned it's gotten nerfed into the ground in terms of how often it spawns these days uh you only have a 20 percent chance of it spawning on any black hole within the galaxy whereas previously you could just take a science ship and move them back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until the event would pop up and obviously that is no longer the case a 20 percent chance of it spawning is quite minimal for something that is so extensive and has such a large event chain attached to it where you have to sacrifice your scientists you have to uh, build special buildings you're being sent onto a wild goose Jace in order to turn your capital into effectively a cluster of tomb worlds which you can then turn into the most powerful solar system in the game. It's a shame really because a lot of people 
really like the worm, because everybody knows what was shall be. Now we're starting to get into the territory of events that used to come around fairly often, except these days they no longer are. And this one is tied. This is the brain slugs as well as the impossible organism. Uh, the brain slug is relatively straightforward. You find a thing on a planet, your scientist gets brain slugged. Essentially, the Goa Uld is hooking up to the brainstem, and let's put it this way, your species is not going to be that alone anymore, because uh, they are now joined by a, a brain slug. Yeah, they are then becoming a brain slug host with some very powerful abilities. Uh, plus 10 on the entire research range, which is pretty darn incredible. Unity as well, on top of that pop growth speed, a little bit reduced, but still, in addition to some of the other bonuses and combos that you can have, this is astounding. It's also astoundingly rare. I don't think I have seen it in the last two to three years or so. Same thing with Niflak as well. A very similar, essentially what you can have is, is you find a planet that has a thing on it, say a species, and you move it, uh, you finish the uh, event chain, and it will then fill up every single uh, unit of housing on a planet with pops. So basically, infinite pops on a planet will instantly fill it up, fill up the housing, etc. The impossible organism, so to speak. Uh, once again, I have never seen this event before. It is part of Distant Stars. People swear that they've seen it multiple times, and it got nerfed into the ground at some point. I don't think anybody has seen it. If you have, Probably pretty lucky. Now, some of you may be familiar with the Caravaneers. Yes, those delightful aliens that roam the galaxy as part of Megacorp. And as part of this particular feature, you have the opportunity to open a reliquary. You only get a very small amount of chances to open up a reliquary. It's about five of them per game, and that's it. And if you open a reliquary, you of course are going to need to buy enough uh, resources, as in caravan coins, to actually do so. Essentially, you have the opportunity to potentially open up a quote-unquote loot box that has one of the rarest items in the game in it. It is, of course, the Galatron. Now, the Galatron has a 1% chance of spawning every single time. There's no adjectives. You have a 1% chance of having it spawn every single time that you do it, which makes it one of the rarest items in the game, because over five of these boxes, you will only have five 1% chances of having it spawn. And it can be insanely rare. It's rather uncommon to get it. If we do get it, however, the Galatron is one of the most powerful items in the game. Let's have a quick look at it. Now, the Galatron has an activation cost of 150 influence. It gives you plus 100 diplomatic weight, which is pretty ridiculous. It gives you plus 3 influence. And on top of that, if you activate it, it can give you random resources, which is pretty crazy. Also, other empires can go to war with you over, to, with you over the Galatron, which is also a little bit frustrating sometimes, but still, the Galatron is completely insane. It is one of the most rare items in the game. And if you can get it, I'm jealous. So let's say that you've done the wise thing within the galaxy. You are ready to declare yourself Galactic Emperor. Right off the get-go, the first Galactic Empire. Yes. The first galactic empire. I think it is very important to think about this for a second because this does not seem like a rare event, like at all, in any way, shape, or form. And you'd be right, this is not a rare event at all. Uh, going for the Imperium is relatively easy. Um, however, uh, if you um, get taken down in the Galactic Imperium, and basically what happens is you can be overcome by rebellion, and the Empire can fall, and then you can reform the Empire again. However, uh, the developers went a little bit overboard with this, and, um, 
let's put it this way. You can do it 14 more times, and every single time you have a different screen, uh, ending up with another Galactic Empire when you're completely maxed out. And to quote one of the, uh, well, the senior game designer over Paradox Interactive, I think it's unlikely that anybody has ever legitimately seen another Galactic Imperium since it would be tough to get the Empire to rise and fall that many times in a single-player game. Um, good luck with that one. Uh, enjoy trying to get that party running, because I think it's going to be an interesting challenge. Yeah, a fun time. Rare. No, not necessarily. Hilariously impractical to the point that it's extremely unlikely anybody is going to do it unless you know now i've pointed it out yeah yeah why are there so many <laughs> now let's talk the rarest of the rare an event so crazily uh, uncommon that it only spawns with one type of empire it can only spawn in a very particular scenario and even then, there's only a 1% chance of, ha of it happening. It is extremely unlikely you have ever heard of this event. It is, of course, none other than the Crystal Enclave. You may think by yourself, Crystal Enclave, a spec, what is that even? What does it do? Well, the Enclaves in the game, as you may have known, uh, are parts of leviathans and essentially what can happen is is that you can reach out to them and they can talk to you and essentially what happens there is is that um they can give you resources in uh in in, in response for trade now void dwellers have their own special enclave called the crystal enclave and the crystal enclave only has a one percent chance of spawning whilst playing as void dwellers but only after the mid-game. Now, the event itself looks like this. You can get a signal from the center of the galaxy. This is halfway through the game. And essentially, you can put them through. And you will be shown this particular screen. Something that even has art, even though it's super unlikely that you will ever see them. And essentially, there is a bunch of uh, storyline there, and you can go ahead and talk to them as soon as they uh, respawn, and there they are. We can have diplomacy with them, and they can tell us more about who they are, and whether or not we can help them with anything. And yeah, we can give them uh, a, a price to, uh, somewhere to stay quite easily. For the next 10 years, we'll be able to enact settled crystalline refugees' decisions on a Habitats, and that's just one of the options that we can do. So the decision here is, once we are underway, we for 10 influence, we can get 5 additional pops that just live here. Now with the decision, the pops themselves are quite interesting. Obviously, uh, they are habitat preference, they have the Void Dweller trait, they are intelligent, and they are docile. Which is always nice, and the additional pops are good as well. But it does not end here it goes a little bit further than that um the crystal enclave has more events than uh these ones that are listed over here because the crystalline empire as it's currently referred to also has the ability to give crystalline construction decisions for a habitat basically what it will do is is um you will get plus eight housing on a habitat and it will reduce building costs on a habitat and on top of that you can also get a leader from them, which is a level 7 scientist. So you may be wondering, where are these guys? Well, they're sitting in their own system called the Outer Gate, with a wormhole connecting to it, as well as a single frozen world called a fro uh, Snow Crystal. And the wormhole that is connected to their system, because yes, they are sitting essentially on a little island in the middle of the galaxy, will connect to a random location somewhere across the galaxy, which in this case is pretty darn far away from where they are. If you kill them, they don't respawn, and uh, if you're angry with them, obviously... They won't help you anymore. It is crazy how these what these guys are like. Uh, I have never seen them before. Uh, if you have seen them in your game, I would like to know because it's so incredibly unlikely for this to happen. It is completely insane. 
So what do you think? Which events, according to you, are rarer than anything else? Something that I may have missed, say, the Grand Herald, or the Nema Rolling Thrall Worlds, or something along those lines. There are a lot of events in Solaris. There are literally hundreds, if not over a thousand, and some of them simply will never pop up for you. And that is the joy of the game, because... You may not necessarily enjoy all of its content over the amount of times that you play it, but at least it will still have surprises for you down the line. Let me know what you think. Let me know which events you love to see but you've never seen before. And that... I'm looking forward to see your comments about that down below. I'm gonna go and wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons for making this video possible. And until next time, take good care of yourselves. And as always, each other.